Greetings and welcome to this episode of Everyday Enchantment. I am your host, Stacey Anden, and I cannot wait to introduce you to our guest today, Erin Scott, who has two podcasts, not just one, but two. And she is a believer that animals and dogs are healers and teachers and sources of inspiration, which is all up my alley as well, too. And she has a very personal journey as well, getting breast cancer at 40 and really having that open her up to following her intuition and really coming back to what was most important to her in her life. So we are going to talk about all those things on today's episode. Greetings! Welcome. You are such an incredible energy on this planet. So I'm so excited to have you, Erin. Thank you so much for being a part of today's conversation. Hi, Stacey. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, you're welcome. So I want to start with this whole idea uh, of dogs and animals as teachers and healers and sources of inspiration, because I think, at least for me, I feel like the humans on this planet, we walk around thinking like the humans are like the elevated species here. And we forget that there is so much surrounding us in the animals and our pets and those kinds of things. And personally, just one of my own gifts is being kind of an animal whisperer, like they're always <laughs> coming to me. But I think it's probably because I make space and honor how much how much energy and wisdom they have for us, helping us here, not always necessarily we think we're doing for them, but maybe we've got it a little bit uh, sideways on that. I don't know. I'm curious what you think about this dog as healers and your own experiences. So it's actually kind of funny, right? Because I did not grow up with animals and I always joke that I was a reluctant dog mom. It was not my idea at all. It was totally my husband's idea to get a dog. So I didn't know I liked dogs until I was 25. And at that time in my life, we had just gone through a huge tragedy, trauma, my husband and I, where my stepson, his son from a previous relationship and the mother of his son had been killed in a car accident. Wow. And, you know, I, I feel like I lost like five years of my life to like this depression and trying to figure out which way was up after that. You know, you think your life's going to look a certain way and then suddenly it's not. And that's when dogs came into my life. And, you know, it is not a lie for me to say that there are days when I wouldn't have gotten out of bed if it wasn't for the dogs. And what ended up happening was, you know, there's sometimes where that was the thing getting me through the day was knowing I could come home and, you know, get down on the floor and get the dog love. And that was like the best part of my day. But over time, it, I started to realize that like, oh, I had so much more to be grateful for, you know, mm -hmm. and it and being with the dogs really helped me stay like in the moment and connect with like the little things in life, the little joys. And then over time, I was able to kind of let that fill my heart. <laughs> and and I felt like I needed to give back. And I I got into volunteering. And that's where I met so many other people, right, who, you know, maybe they have been through a hard time in their life, but they spend it now at the animal shelter trying to give back, or they leave their job to go start a nonprofit organization, or they're writing a book because of something that happened. And, and I really just felt like if it wasn't for the dogs, I wouldn't have met any of these amazing people, and I wouldn't have gotten as far as I did in my own healing as well. Yeah, they're like such amazing guides for us. That's why I think we think the humans think we're doing for the dogs or doing for the animals. And I'm like, I wonder if maybe it's a little bit different. And it's funny, I didn't, I just till you shared that story, I did not grow up around a lot of animals, not dogs, because my father was scared to death of dogs. So we did not have like a family dog growing up. 
And it wasn't until my first marriage, I was probably around the same age in my mid twenties. And my husband then wanted obviously to have dogs. He'd always had dogs. And I was a little nervous because my father's fear of like dogs, you know, and not growing up around them as a child, it was kind of like, okay, how do I build a relationship um, with these, you know, with these things that seemingly unpredictable. <laughs> um, but I love that. And I love how, again, it was almost Almost like your journey of grieving and coming back to yourself and and finding your way through a very heart wrenching life experience. It's like like there's an anchor that a dog provides of this unconditional love. We're all seeking that in so many ways, but we trip over ourselves as humans, right? We get judgy, we get whatever, we have lots of conditions, and to me, one of the most kind of when you just simplify it all the way down to the bare essence of a dog is like they show up in that present moment willing to greet you and love you and be in that moment with you in a way that is so hard I think sometimes for humans to do for each other. Yeah, it's very pure, like without, you know, strings attached or anything. Absolutely. (laughs) And I don't know about you, but one of the things that I discovered is now I've been divorced in in my my second marriage. When my husband had a neck surgery, pretty serious neck surgery, my dog, who most people know, his name's Dr. Pepper, he literally slept with my husband who had to like sleep on the couch kind of sitting up for like a month or so he slept with him he did not leave his side the entire time he was sick and he was recovering and coming through all of that and i believe anytime either one of us is not feeling well first of all, that dog just senses it. Like they are also very much in this intuitive energy because they're not overthinking like Mm -hmm. we are. Should I follow this? Should I not? They just go over and they honor whatever they're being called to do. And I really believe, I don't know if this is for every dog and I don't know, this is an interesting question, but he is very much a very powerful, like energetic healer. Like my husband healed faster as a result. I know of what Dr. Pepper did, what I was doing to support him. Then when I got my gallbladder out a couple months ago, again, he's like, right. He's laying across my, like where my scars were, which you would think would have been like a painful experience, but actually whatever he was doing, it felt so calming and grounding. And I felt so much better every time he would just, it's almost like, he's like, okay, what is, you know, what does my dog mom need or my dog dad need or whatever, whoever in the family, they just have this sense of it, which is such a beautiful example for all of us. Absolutely. Yeah. We've seen that. In fact, one of our, or our only dog right now is Nino and we jokingly call him nurse Nino because he knows when you're not feeling well and, you know, it might just be, oh, you, my husband has a migraine or, you know, when I was going through, uh, you know, cancer and chemo and all these things, like he was, he's this big 80 pound dog of it. He was so gentle and, you know, so careful about how he would snuggle or approach you and stuff, even though he might tear through the house at 100 miles an hour any other time, you know, and um, yeah, all of our dogs have had that element, but Nino in particular. I love that. And and I wonder for people who are listening, it's like, what do they experience with their own pets? And do we, how do we intentionally nurture that type of relationship? Not like you have to go have a conversation with the dog, but like, do we make space for the dog to, again, step into those roles and be in those spaces with us and receive? Because I think that's another piece of, you know, human kind of entanglement is, we like to give, we like to be in charge, we like to be in control. Are we, you know, can we be vulnerable enough to like really drop into that space where we're receiving something without having to do more, give more? And that I think sometimes can be really hard for us. Yeah, yeah. That's definitely something I have struggled with. And and honestly, like it's something else I credit the dogs with helping me. Uh, One of our old gals, Kalua, I I swear it was like her message to me of like, 
I want to love you too, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> like I, that was almost like this download that I got, you know, from her was like, I just wanted to, it was so important for me to explain, you know, tell them how much I love them and take care of them. And I swear she was telling me like, I want to love you too. Like, I need you to accept my love. You know, she was very uh, exuberant in, in her love giving. <laughs> I love that. And I love, again, it's this relationship of giving and receiving healing to me is very much like activating a channel with like I always say if I'm doing any healing work it's like it's not me that's doing the healing I'm act helping people activate the healing within themselves which I think is what dogs you know are doing with wordlessly which is also something we have a hard time right <laughs> like wait wait because my mother-in-law when she was alive she always like I wish I knew what Dr. Pepper was saying I always said well just talk to him you know ask him him, you can get a sense. You don't have to have a literal conversation to be able to really get a sense. And I feel that about all animals. If yeah. you want to be in relationship with them, it's about just saying, hey, what's happening? What do you want me to know? Or how can I be in this space? You know, what do you want? You know, what do you want from this space as well as just what I want? And it brings me to this. I, and I was saying to you before we started, I don't know if I remembered or maybe I forgot that at 40, you had breast cancer and that changed your life. I mean, you already had something when you were younger and then what, 15 years later, then something else. How how did that impact kind of where you were already headed and where you were going? Because I'm, I know when people get big life changing events and experiences, it just all seems to kind of come together in interesting ways. Yeah. So I was 38 when I was diagnosed and I officially became a survivor the same week that I turned 40. Wow. So it was a bit of a, a journey and, you know, it was all just quite a shock. Mm -hmm. Um you know, I don't have any, I always joke, like, we're a heart attack family, not a cancer family, you know, no one in my oh. family, I didn't have any of the genetic markers or, or anything like that. And I completely found it myself by accident. Um, you know, do those checks <laughs> in the shower and things like that, ladies, you know. And um, it was also a little scary in the sense that they considered it stage two, which is like, you know, you have really good, you know, survival statistics. Right. Um, but we actually lost my mother-in-law to breast cancer. Wow. And that was actually within a couple months of losing my stepson, actually. It was all in the same year. And it was the same thing where she had been told, oh, you caught this really early. You know, it's going to be okay. And less than a year later, she was gone and she was only 47. And so my husband in particular had this really hard time trusting that I was going to be okay, yeah. you know? And so it was this really big emotional uh, thing with me and, and that I've had to like do work on, right? Cause then I feel like I'm responsible for putting on a happy face and assuring everybody that I'm going to be okay. Even, you know, though I might feel not great physically or mentally, I'm a mess, you know? Yeah, um, but I guess what was really interesting that came out of that is, you know, I worked as a long time in a career and I felt like I had a really supportive work environment. And while my boss and the owner of the company, you know, the owner of the company was extremely supportive, I had other colleagues that weren't mm -hmm. and that it seemed like this was a really <laughs> big inconvenience for them that I might not be in the office 100% of the time because you know what I had to go get chemo every three weeks and I didn't feel real good the next day yeah. and you know that I maybe wasn't up, up to 100% you know the way that I, I once was maybe I wasn't on top of, of things every well you know as well as I once was because I it was physically taking everything in me to get in the car and drive to the office that day you yeah. know. And so I guess where I had been really content in a career for almost 20 years and uh, it, it suddenly made me kind of start confronting like, well, what is my future going to look like? And, you know, if, if I stay in this type of career, I'm always sort of going to be at the whim of, of somebody else controlling the environment and me hoping that that works for me or hoping that that's okay or hoping that I can function at 100%. And it was kind of a, a wake up call to like, 
oh, I think I want to be more in control of my future choices <laughs> mm-hmm. and that maybe I have this, um, you know, creative outlet in me that I, that I needed to get out. And, and what that started was, was me starting my own podcast. And, you know, if honestly, like I can probably say if it wasn't for the breast cancer, I never would have started that journey. It probably would have been a thing that sat in my head and mm-hmm. was like, Oh, you should do that. Shouldn't somebody do that? Wouldn't it be neat if there was this podcast and and I, I didn't you know and there's been a lot of things in life right that I can look back and see that I didn't follow uh that nudge on and it was kind of like all right I just turned 40 I just peak cancer I'm making this promise to myself that when I get these ideas like I'm gonna do them maybe they'll work out maybe they don't I don't know but I at least have to follow this voice that's calling in my head to see where it goes and and then that has really shaped the whole last four years of my life, you know, and I'm so incredibly grateful that I put myself out into the world in that way, which was very uncomfortable for me. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I think that for so many of us, we do get the nudges, right? We get these nudges and it's so often we're like, we'll get to it or who am I to do, right? Like there's so many things that kind of will block us from taking that first step or taking that thing. And it's so interesting to me too, because I think that you're right. We have to step into this pool of besides this moment right here, right now, we we don't, we can never guarantee for ourselves or anything else what it's going to look like, whether it's going to look the same as we imagined or whatever. And that is really scary to touch the fragility, right? Like we have a lot of things in our lives that kind of create this sense of stability and security. And today's going to look like tomorrow and tomorrow's going to look like, right? Like this continuity when in reality, I know I've told clients sometimes I'm like, a meteor could hit us in five minutes. Not that I want that, but I mean, it could. And so how do we, to your point about the dogs teaching you, right? Like starting this journey of like, how do we be in the present moment in a way that, again, we still feel safe enough to be able to take the risk. Otherwise we're not just curl up in a ball, but at the same time, we do. We have all these incredible gifts and superpowers that I just feel like so often so many of us are kind of muting or putting on hold. And so for myself and so many people that I know, it's like sometimes there is a big catalyst. Sometimes there's not. Maybe it's just a little thing. Maybe you listen to this podcast and you're like, you know what? I don't need a big medical health thing in order to say, what is that thing that I really feel been feeling nudged to do and what is a step to take that I could do in that direction. I love, first of all, the fact you have two podcasts, you use the dogs or the dogs are part of, right, this whole beautiful creative endeavor. It's like almost like they set the foundation for so much healing when they came into your life, you know, your lives. And then this idea of like, okay, how are we going to co-create? Like they're helping the world change by coming through you through this channel, which I absolutely love. And I think, again, we don't give animals enough credit for the power that they have to help us change the planet here and the things that we're doing. And and that was kind of the basis of me starting the first podcast, which is called Believe in Dog. Mm-hmm. And it's talking to people who have a story of being called to do something because of their love of animals and you know it might be write a book or start a nonprofit organization or you know it might even be something smaller in the world you know but it could be changing a career or just something that where you know their love of dogs spoke to them so much that they needed to take an action in the world yeah and i think i don't know sometimes when you feel like you have this great love you have this great companion in a pet then that is almost sometimes again like we're always looking to feel like we're being supported we're be and i think like i i Dr. Pepper, I'm telling you, he's, he, first of all, he's listening always. He has an ear up. He lays around with an ear up when we're doing things. And I feel like he's not only just, you know, being a part of all of this, but he's also like my biggest cheerleader. So when in the moments that I feel most afraid, most alone, having that energy in my house, 
Hey, it's not, I don't even have to go anywhere. It's like you have this beautiful energy you've invited into your house and into your life. It's like, how do we, how do we recognize that in a way? And again, nurture it in a way that maybe the dogs are here again to help literally nudge us into different places and they're the catalyst for it. So I love that. I love like if you have a pet in your life, again, maybe there's some message there for you as well if you're listening. Or maybe you've always felt there's this kindred thing you haven't been able to put your quite put your finger on because again, that's the other thing. It's like believing sometimes when you're not seeing it in advance and we have a hard time as humans doing that. <laughs> you know, for the first three and a half years of doing this, my girl Penny was always by my side when I recorded and we lost her earlier this year. And, you know, I had to take, stop and take a beat and be like, can I do this without her next to me? You know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I get it. I was just talking to somebody on the trail this morning about, you know, Dr. Pepper's going to be 10 years old, which is amazing. And he's still in great health. But it's like there will come a time where they're going to pass through, you know, this physical body of theirs. And how do we, again, make space for the grieving of that and all of the transition? I do believe, and I don't know, this is something interesting to me, but I believe that that cracking open of our hearts and kind of that heartbreak that we feel is part of their gift to us, right? Part of the way they help us heal, not to protect us and say, hey, nothing terrible is ever going to happen to you as a human, because we all know that's not true. But how do you walk through it? I am here to help you. I'm here to help your, you know, heart chakra. I don't know if, do if that's where dogs are, but I think everybody has their own like dog, like guide, whether it's like, literally in their house or maybe like my husband i swear has a lab a golden lab that has been his one of his spirit guides and every time when i'm in just like i'm taking a moment and i'm talking to him at the soul level that dog comes through and it's like i just imagine them kind of walking down the trail this never happens obviously this is all just my imagination but this like beautiful lab that's so grounded just taking its time and she's just by his side always so that's the other thing if you can't have a pet for whatever reason it doesn't mean you can't connect to dog energy or that spirit energy you know they could be all around you in other ways cat energy you know whatever you feel drawn to and just feel like they become these beautiful vehicles for us to deepen love, like for ourselves and others on this planet. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. He's like, what? You got a whole thing of guides lined up for me. I said, I do. You have a horse. <laughs> you have a horse. You have a, you have a, you know, you have this golden and it's beautiful. And I just like, it's almost like if you just, you know, if we see the human right kind of like picture and then you, it's almost like it just kind of fades into view all these other energies supporting us and and sometimes like what do i most need right when you're going through that really dark time it's like what do i most need something that's going to help remind me about the living right because losing my mother-in-law a couple months ago it's like i found through death like you touch life so tenderly as well too like they're so intertwined it's like how do you really come into living and holding that space of like letting go whether it's literal letting go or some you know a change or transition in our lives and i don't know it's like i i wouldn't want to do it as much as i didn't have a dog or any real animals growing up i now can't even imagine my life with that <laughs> Oh, absolutely. I could. Right? Yeah. What it's is weird the... for me having one dog. <laughs> Are you going to get another one? I'm sure we will, but yeah. it just hasn't seemed like the right time yet. What's the like wildest memory or some story that the dogs, whether here or now or in the past, have done that you're just like, oh my gosh, just blows your mind about them? Well, honestly, the story of my girl Penny, who was like the first dog that I ever felt like was like my dog, you know, like our other dogs had always loved my husband or, you know, but, and they love me too, but you know, they always would have picked him over me. 
<laughs> got it. I know what you mean. <laughs> and so I was out volunteering uh, with my friend uh, who volunteered with a, an organization that does cat. Uh, it's called TNR, Trap, Neuter, Return um, of, of Feral Cats. Right. So I'm out volunteering with her. And here comes this pit bull running out of an alley right in front of our car. And that was Penny. And she just jumped right in my friend's car and put her feet up on the center console and was like, where are we going? And I was just like, oh, my God, this is my dog. Like, I just knew in that moment. And we had a seven and a half amazing years together, you know, and um, I'm just like always so grateful for for that moment. And it was like. I just knew like that was my dog and I, I just I love that story you know like I literally found this dog in this alley in Baltimore <laughs> and she found you she's like okay yeah. that's my person that's yeah. where I'm at and it's interesting because we can have different animals come into our lives like at different times for different things right whatever their journey is and whatever our journey is and I just love that again you I know so many people who are like I wasn't planning on having a pet. And then this cat or this dog showed up on my doorstep. And it's like, again, this is that whole like everyday enchantment. The signs are all around us. Yeah. Being guided, being supported, all of that is all around us. And it's it's not a matter of like, is it happening or isn't it happening? I think anyway, it's just, do we choose to see it? And I believe in a world where Again, this is what it is. Everything, every bird, every tree, every dog, every cat, every human is trying again to come back to these beautiful energies of how do we love ourselves? How do we love each other? How do we create relationships where we heal through the relationship? We offer that to each other, not to your point, fix it or try to skip over things, but actually go through it. And there's so much human to human that we can do healing. But I think sometimes with animals, they're just a, they're a safer place sometimes than humans yeah. to be perfect. My nervous system immediately yeah. gets relaxed right around the I, almost all the dogs. There is a German shepherd in my neighborhood who I love from afar, but the bark, every time he barks, his owners are like, he's very friendly. I was like, I believe that, but there's something about that bark that gets my nervous system. And I'm like, okay, okay. So I don't know, maybe I have a German shepherd in my future and some point we'll, we'll work that out together. But um, yeah, they just can be really safe containers for us. And um, and so if you're sitting next to your dog later after you've listened to this podcast today, you know, yeah, ask them, hey, you know, what is it, you know, that they want us to know or just give them an extra kiss and a love. Mm -hmm. And I think they also, I've found this to be true. They also allow us to be super loving sometimes when it's hard to do that sometimes in real life, like who doesn't go up to their dog and is like all snuggly and like, you know, the voice that we use and everything. And it's like, it gives us an opportunity to touch that part of ourselves that sometimes as adults, we keep kind of like locked up a little bit more. We don't show it because it's not, I don't know, professional, adult, I don't know, would name all the things that the world would tell us why we shouldn't do that. And to me, it's like, I will cry, I will snuggle you, I will love on you. And there's nothing that isn't like, you know, accepted and, you know, it, with, the, with the dog. It just, it, he's like, do it, be yourself. There's nothing that you have to be than being yourself now in this moment. I mean, I know this is a saying you usually see on like a decorative pillow somewhere, but I think it's true lesson in life is be the person your dog thinks you are. Yes. <laughs> well, and that can nudge you somewhere else, which I mm -hmm. absolutely love too. And I love, like I said, I, I want to hear as we're kind of coming to close, uh, I want to hear a little bit about, so if people want to find you out in the world of podcasts or other places, where can they... Um, where can they get more of your magic and the dog magic? Sure. So Erin, uh, the dog mom.com has links to everything that I'm doing. And it's been an interesting journey just over these last six months or so uh, over, you know, these last four years since starting the podcast, 
people come to me that are like, how do you start a podcast? Or I want to be a podcast guest. So now I have a whole other business called AaronScottPodcasts.com, where yeah. I help people with starting their podcasts, with finding out how to become a guest on podcasts. And uh, that's been a really exciting journey, uh, too. So we'll see where that goes. I love it. It's like one door opens, and then it opens another door. And we don't have to always know what all the doors are. So yeah. absolutely. That just like makes my heart warm because that's me <laughs> following all the breadcrumbs, right. not worrying about what the puzzle pieces, you know, what the puzzle is going to look like, but trusting that all those pieces are absolutely in beautiful alignment. And if you left our listeners with one thing that you, I mean, we did just talk about that beautiful saying, but if there's anything else that you think, again, as they clothes that you want them to take with them on their way out, what would it be? What is it? What have you found and discovered, you know, over the years with dogs and your relationships and doing all this work and, you know, nonprofit work, everything that you've been doing, what, what is at the core of all of this for you? I guess my greatest wish is that it, it won't take other people getting a cancer diagnosis to start following you know, what's in their heart, you know, those nudges that won't leave them alone. If they're having these conversations in their head or this thing that keeps coming to them, you know, don't let it take some life altering thing, you know, follow it now because you just never know what's lying ahead and it's, it's always going to work out well. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's one of my things. It's always going to work out better than we expected. <laughs> Erin, it's been such a pleasure. Thank you so much. I uh, look forward to getting this out and having people check you out as well. And all that information you mentioned will be in the show notes for folks. So until next time, thank you for being a part of Everyday Enchantment and have a beautiful, beautiful day. Thank you so much, Stacey. Take care. And that's a wrap. Thank you so much for tuning in. Get all the delicious details and links we've mentioned in this episode in the show notes below. If you'd like to chat about this episode or learn more about how to work with me, come visit me in my private Facebook group, Everyday Enchantment, or check out my website, stacyandon.com, where you can find out more about my Leap of Faith coaching, my Map Makers group program, and the School of Intuitive Magic. Plus a special shout out for all the production and editing of this show by Richard Wilmore. That's it for now, love. Here's to living a life enchanted. See you soon.